To be Arab or not Arab. To be American or not American. To be a hyphen of some sort, a combination, a fragment of one or the other, not fully whole, not fully part, is the reality of many of us in this room today. This has been quite problematic in an ever more politically charged environment. An environment, let me start again. <laughs> to be Arab or not Arab, to be American or not American, to be a hyphen of some sort, a combination, a fragment of one or the other, not fully whole, not fully part, is the reality of many of us in this room tonight. This has been quite problematic in an ever more politically charged environment. An environment that instead of promoting curiosity and community, opts instead to promote ignorance and hostility. These are the times in which we live in these United States. But these are also the times in which we continue to sing. As the poet and playwright Brecht once wrote, in the dark times will there be singing? Yes, there will be singing about the dark times. Speaking of which, today, May 15, marks the annual commemoration of the displacement of the Palestinian people, the destruction and depopulation of their villages and towns. It has been 71 years. And today, we continue to sing about the dark times. In the words of Mahmoud Darwish, being Palestinian is not a slogan. It is not a profession. A Palestinian is a human being, a tormented being who has daily questions, both national and existential. I say that to be a human being is to give life to the Palestinian in each one of us, no matter where we come from, because that means giving voice to everything inside us that wills the fight against all levels and forms of oppression, be them national or existential, across the world. This is how we continue to sing about the dark times. My name is Riwa Zinati, and I am a Lebanese hyphen American poet and writer, and the founder of Sukun Magazine, which is an Arab themed online literary magazine publishing art and literature in English. I'm thrilled to welcome you to Dome, which is Dearborn's open mic series in English, happening every third Wednesday of the month. And this is our second event this year, so looking forward to many more. Um, I just want to say thank you for being here, all of you. Uh, you took the time to spend it here. You could be anywhere else, uh, especially that it's Ramadan, so Ramadan Karim to everybody. But you chose to be here from 7 to 8.30, and I appreciate and thank you for your support. On a personal note, I recently moved to Detroit, actually, like three months ago. And I was very excited to be here. The first place that I visited, uh, literally the first week I was here, was actually the um, Arab American Museum. And um, I'm excited to be here, even though I've heard so many, uh, like the tired cliches and the stereotypes of, oh, you're moving to Dearborn. What are you going to go do there? I don't know if you're familiar with that. Do you know what I'm talking about? People are like, you're, you're nodding. What kind of cliches do we have here? Can you give me like one or two? Driving. The driving? The driving, the insurance. Um, yeah. What about like the community or the culture? It's a bubble. It's a bubble? Is that a good thing? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm actually, um, you see, I've lived in Beirut and I've lived in Dubai, I've lived in St. Louis and Iowa City, but um, I have never felt more excited to explore my dual identity or my triple identity. Uh, like I am here in Dearborn. Because you never get that anywhere. You don't get that in Dubai, you don't get that in uh, Iowa City, you don't get that in Beirut, even though I'm originally uh, Lebanese. So, um, I have it all written down here and now I'm like blanking out, sorry. Anyway, um, to continue what I wanted to say was that Arab American art and literature is on the rise and has increasingly been on the radar. And being here tonight is exactly what propels us forward into further visibility <clears throat> and wider representation. So to be rooted in heritage yet not bogged down by it is probably the best and most difficult thing that we can try to attain for ourselves 
and for our children. So through poetry and storytelling, art and music, and even through the underrated power of comedy, we try to find that balance. Art and literature have always been at the forefront of profound shifts in human consciousness. This is what we try to do here at Dome. With Mother's Day behind us, I'd like to say Happy Mother's Day um, round two, because where I also come from, Mother's Day is when? March, March 21st, 21. which is the first day of spring. Exactly. On a metaphorical level, oftentimes we link the idea of motherhood to the idea of mother land, mother tongue, mother earth. And perhaps to many of us in this room, this rings especially true. But I'd also like to call out to the non-mothers among us who either chose to exist without children or have gone through an abortion or couldn't have children even when they tried. I honestly don't think we talk enough about it. We don't talk seriously enough about this complicated and also very political topic. Especially now if you listen to the news, what's going on? They're banning abortion. Anti-abortion laws, left, right, and center, everywhere, so it's a big deal. I, for one, insist on human freedom and integrity and believe in the role of literature to push back against those in power who always seek to strip away the right to choose and the right to bodily autonomy. Literature, what we're doing today, and art and music should aim to break down stigmas and shift the lens of the status quo. Also, in this case, the direct relationship between womanhood and motherhood, as if the two are interchangeable or cannot exist one without the other. All right. Before I lose my voice, I'd like to say that we have a great lineup tonight. We have music, we have poetry, we have stand-up comedy, and I'm very excited to introduce each and every one of them tonight. But before that, I would like to share a poem with you um, along the same, in the same vein of the idea of womanhood and motherhood and gender roles. 